A spacefaring civilization had never been denied entry to the Galactic Federation in a millennia since its inception. The humans might well be the first. No species in their right mind would vote in favour of their admission. Their government's instability was something we had never witnessed in an industrial civilization, let alone a spacefaring one. How could you trust a species that couldn't maintain control of their own people? The humans' prospects for admission were pretty grim, judging by the expressions around the Senate. Why don't we just reject their application now? I quipped to the chamber. It will save us all time. All sentient species are entitled to stand before the Federation Council and make their case for admission. Emperor Foylk of the Simix Hegemony drummed his claws on the table, looking bored already. We must at least give the appearance of a fair trial. I clapped my mandibles in disapproval. The Terrans had yet another newly installed leader. This one was hell-bent on getting them into the Federation. It was a matter of time before she bit the dust, just like her predecessors. How could an impartial body accept the legitimacy of any of their rulers? It was impossible to forget the chaos of their last few years. When contact was established with Earth, Chancellor Landon Morris was in power. His rule appeared to be accepted by the human public. His staff acted content in their subservience, and his generals heeded his orders. Several suitors sidled up to the Terran Union, hoping to add a new ally to their political bloc. The humans seemed intelligent, friendly, and adaptable. Who wouldn't want them in their corner? It was too good to be true. There were no warning signs from Chancellor Morris that anything was amiss. No dialogue to suggest their command was crumbling. We simply arrived at a Federation summit to find a complete turnover of human personnel. Chancellor Rachel Lopez had taken over the Terran Union in a sudden power grab. She vowed to undo every action of her predecessor and laid out a radically different agenda. While her government retained the Terran Union moniker, it was clear it was in name only. Now if that had been an isolated incident, it could have been forgiven. Military coups and noble infighting were not uncommon in the wake of First Contact. It was a tumultuous time for many species, one where they struggled to find a cohesive identity. Fear and uncertainty abounded, and those were common motivators for rebellion. However, the humans overthrew or ousted their leaders every few cycles. Chancellor Lopez's government was toppled, as were the two leaders that followed her. And thanks to their turbulent changes, the humans became a pariah. They were locked in an untenable power struggle, by our judgement. All interest in an alliance with them, from their galactic neighbours, dissipated. Who would ally with such a volatile species? Any agreements made with the Terran Union could be reversed at the drop of a hat. It seemed unlikely the government a deal was signed with would exist a few years down the road. The Council recognises Chancellor Leah Brown of the Terran Union, Fwix said, somehow maintaining a serious tone. Send the human in. I watched with sceptical eyes as a human strode into the chamber, escorted by a Federation guard. The grey hair that flowed past her shoulders was a clear mark of her age. The glasses and the wrinkles didn't make her look any younger either. How did the Terran generals feel about being commanded by someone old and half-blind? I scoffed. It was all I could do to stifle a laugh. I'd be shocked if this regime lasts a cycle. Chancellor Brown smiled as she stepped to the microphone. Greetings, honoured rulers of the Federation. Thank you for having us. Welcome, human, Foyek replied. Understand before we begin that your species will face considerable scrutiny in this process. We ask for honest answers to help us reach a determination. She nodded. I understand. I intend to answer all questions in a spirit of transparency. Very well. Let us open up the floor to questions from... I jabbed a pincer on the unmute button, and a blue hologram appeared by my station. The faster I could eviscerate the hairless ape, the sooner this proceeding would be over. Perhaps they withdraw the request themselves. Follick gave a weary sigh. The council recognises King Gelton of the Jarl Commonwealth. Thank you. My question is simple. I leaned forward in my seat, glowing at the Terran. Why should the Federation allow such an unstable government into our ranks? The human blinked in surprise. Unstable? Why'd you say that? Your governments rise and fall with the wind. I sneered. I have no faith that this latest iteration of the Terran Union will last. I beg your pardon? We have our continuity of government down to a science. The Terran Union has been an instrument of peace for centuries. Oh, please. Your government is the opposite of continuity. You're the fifth chancellor in the span of three decades. And I am just a translation error official. Our translation error values are the pillar of our society, you know. Your translation is malfunctioning. 
What did you say before values? Translation error? Yes, what does that mean? Shock flashed on the Chancellor's face, though she regained her composure quickly. It means that the people choose their government. What people? The nobles? The generals? The citizens of Earth. All of them. Stunned exclamations erupted throughout the chamber. Was Chancellor Brown saying the Terran government let the peasants rule them, not the other way around? The notion was ludicrous. I didn't see how such a system could function. The average person was simple-minded and ignorant. They needed someone to tell them what to do. Without guidance, the lesser folk would act in unfettered self-interest. You might as well not have a government at all. Silence! Emperor Foyek bellowed. Chancellor, I don't see how that is possible. The commoners would never agree on a single person. The human leader frowned. Of course not. Our leaders are determined by voting, just like how you are deciding our admission status. The candidate with the most popular support wins. How do you decide when to hold a vote? Foyek Santana was bunched up. He looked utterly flabbergasted. And who... How do you count the results? The translation error are regularly scheduled and counted by government volunteers. It's not just my office, it's for local positions and legislative bodies too. I am muting myself. This is preposterous. Surely there's some limits on who they can vote for. I don't follow. Some qualifications, status or lineage to match your throne. You wouldn't want any peasant becoming the leader. Anyone can run. Even us, um, lowly peasants. The human had the gall to chuckle. I found no humour in the absurdity of it all. Your campaign just has to draw enough interest to get on the ballot. And out of the billions of people in the soul system, they drew your name out of the hat? Well, not exactly, but... Why you? People like my ideas. They believed in my vision. That's it? That's it. I fell quiet. It was no wonder this laughable system hasn't been replicated elsewhere in the galaxy. How could the Terran government have any semblance of authority? How could a power that did not subjugate their subjects maintain the rule of law? I doubted a single person on Earth respected the Chancellor's office. Without fear, without a hierarchy, there was no society. Imagine centering government policy around popularity, as though that was a reasonable metric for governance. I could just picture Chancellor Brown begging the favour of paupers like an undignified cleric. The common folk were a fickle lot that didn't understand what they really wanted. The amount of Terran leaders in the short time we knew them was the best evidence that democracy didn't work. Did humans really drag their leaders from their castles every time the peasants changed their minds? Any sensible species would have scrapped the idea after seeing what it put their country through. The chaos of a rebellion was no joke. Depending on how military fashion sided, it could take months for the ensuing power struggle to die. I doubted hardened soldiers just went along with peasant decrees. I fixed the human with a condescending stare. Remind me of your predecessor's name, Chancellor. Brendan Cortez, she answered. How did you depose of him? I reckon that was quite a bloody affair. He conceded the translation error and stepped down. The transition of power was peaceful, as it always is. He lost, fair and square, and that's that. What kind of a ruler would capitulate to the opposition, willingly? By the sound of it, that was the rule, not the exception. These Terrans must be a witless and spineless bunch. At any rate, the true idiocy was advertising that fact on the galactic stage. It was a matter of time before an empire decided to assimilate them, back to the proper order. And your first leader, Chancellor Morris. Emperor Foyg sounded more bewildered by the minute. He claimed to be popular. I wouldn't think he could lose. What changed? Chancellor Brown shrugged. Oh, he was quite well liked, but he reached his term limit. Term limit? Foyer gasped incredulously. The human nodded. Yeah, you wouldn't want one person to cling to power indefinitely. It's a recipe for corruption. I... I think that's enough for today, human. We must adjourn our session, for my sanity. You've given the Federation much food for thought. We will return at the same time tomorrow to vote on your admission. The various representatives began to file out of the hall, carving a wide path around Chancellor Brown. My opinion of the humans had only deteriorated from when I thought them insolent and rash. The Federation had to bar their entry. Partnering with a leader that had no rightful claim to the throne was out of the question. Hell, if we kept them around, their crazy ideas might worm their way into the peasants' heads. We had to ostracise the apes before our entire society was destabilised. My ace scuttled over to my side as I withdrew to my private retreat. No doubt he overheard the proceedings and formed his own thoughts on the matter. Against my better judgement, I decided to take the low-born Gelatin into my confidence. It would work wonders for my sanity to disparage the humans with another soul. 
What a primitive mercurial species. These humans have no place in the Federation, clearly, I remarked. He waved a pencil in a non-committal gesture. That is your decision, sir. I narrowed my eyes. You don't agree? The orderly hesitated, and I noted the glint of fear in his eyes. Permission to speak freely, I added, with a grudging huff. Go on, out with it. Well, I find them fascinating. All of their people standing united, acting out of collective interest, engaging in public discourse, nourishing opinions. Their government stands for something, an ideal. Maybe if we study these humans, we could learn something. You make it sound so utopian. Do you want some nobody calling the shots? Representing your species, making decisions of life and death, letting commoners decide right and wrong as if they know what's best? It's a silly thought. The aide was silent. And that silence was maddening. Don't you see? I hissed. Of course, sir. My mistake. The young servant stared off at the floor, a brooding look in his eyes. Quite a silly thought indeed.